this next song is about Super Jan's most recent conquering. He takes them out and then to a room. He has the intent to have sex with them soon. But Super Jan has a short fuse. The next day they blow up his phone. He don't want your thank yous. Whoa, hello, hello, hello. Is what they yell when they keep calling Jan on his phone. Whoa, hello, hello, hello. And he picks up and tells the hoes to please leave him alone. Whoa, he doesn't need pussy, so they should stop harassing. These girls are calling constantly. So he'll have to change his phone They don't get They were just a one night stand Welcome to Talk Dragon Ball Ladies and gentlemen And all over the world here I am um, Big D and this is Jay uh, Check out Jay's channel Please, uh, Super Jayin uh, J-A-Y-A-I-N And uh, you can get all kinds of content Jay, what do you got going on in your channel? Well, this week I'm going to do Another figurine or manga pickup to see any additions I add to my collection. I will be releasing my Jaco, the Galactic Patrolman manga review, which was promised before the re English release of Resurrection of F, and obviously the Dragon Ball Super Episode 3 review when it comes out in English. Yes, the it English is. sub. Well, it should be out by the time they hear this. Jay, uh, now I want to know yes or no because Josh from Dragon Ball Nation is also reviewing toys now. Who is going to review the Tanga Egg first? Not me. I'm not touching it. So it's going to be, it's going to be Josh it. then. All right. Just, it's going to be Josh. I just want everybody to know that. So this week I want to talk a little bit about Dragon Ball Super, which is like kind of what we talk about most of the time. Cause that's what's hot right now. And I want to talk about kind of some issues that I'm having with this show. Now, we try to be positive on, on our channels and, you know, very optimistic because Dragon Ball Super is Dragon Ball Right, like Quan Man said, this is right in the middle of Dragon Ball Renaissance. But I got some issues with Dragon Ball Super, bro, and I want to get your thoughts on these issues, see if you agree with me. And if you don't, that's okay, too. Sounds good. Uh, I do have some problems with Dragon Ball Super. Would you like me to start? Uh, sure. You go ahead, and then I will. Well, actually, let's – how do you want to – you know what? Let me start, and then I'll go to you, all right? And there's a reason why, because you might say the same thing I'm going to say, and I want to give it a nice little intro. So the first yeah. issue we, I want to cover, and then we'll go to yours, is I want to cover this whole Beerus. Beerus is now Beerus the Walking Retcon here, and it's kind of bugging me. So we now know officially in the Japanese version that Beerus ordered Frieza to blow up Planet Vegeta. And I have said in a previous video on my channel my issues with this. To me, it undercuts the Frieza saga. In my opinion, it takes a little bit of heat away from Frieza, and it makes the personal issue between Frieza and Vegeta not so personal. Now we found out most recently in Dragon Ball Super that Old Kai was sealed in the Z Sword by Beerus, and we found out that Beerus, you know, made the dinosaurs extinct, even though they aren't extinct based on Dragon Ball. So. Uh, Jay, I mean, it, it's literally to the point now where I feel like Beerus is responsible for everything. Like, we're going to find out the weather the weather disaster on planet Namek was also Beerus. Like, I honestly feel that's going to be the next one. Yeah, I, I have a few problems with, with pretty much everything you've just mentioned. Planet Namek being the, the, the serious one, like, the whole Frieza saga is kind of undermined, and Frieza's motives really change. You, you feel, even though it's not said that his motives change, it's just pretty much known now that... Frieza was ordered to destroy planet Namek, and it does it does take away the personal battle between the last surviving Saiyans and Frieza, and the, the struggle that Goku has with Frieza kind of feels like, you know, it doesn't feel as personal. Like, when you watch that fight for me, it was like Goku was destined to be the one to beat Frieza. You know, Vegeta said, you know, he must be defeated by the hand of a Saiyan, and it kind of didn't feel that way now that we know that Beerus is the one responsible for ordering Frieza to do that, even though Frieza still did destroy planet Vegeta, it just doesn't feel the same because it's like Frieza. There, there was it was really built up. Frieza was a tr afraid of the Saiyans uh, growing in number and teaming up against him. So yes. that's kind of contradicted by the fact that Beerus has gone. Okay, I need you to do this for me, please. Like it's just it it just doesn't feel like the Namek saga anymore to me. And I mean, it's kind of a shame. Like I'm still going to enjoy watching the Namek saga whenever I do, but I'm going to have that in the back of my head, and I think that's what annoys me the most, is that whenever I go back and watch that saga, I've got that in the back of my head now. Yeah, and that's the thing, that even though... I mean, it would have been different if it was like Beerus suggested that Frieza do it. No, he said he actually says in the Japanese version of Super, 
uh, which will probably be the same in the dub. He says, you know, did he blow up the plant like I ordered him to? Which to me, I don't like that, bro. I genuinely don't like that because like you just said, the character of Frieza is modeled after several different historical figures, including several dictators, like I've said before. And Frieza is very superstitious. And the whole idea, like you just said, is that Frieza was paranoid. That's what drove him to commit that genocide without even thinking is how paranoid he was. And it's interesting because when you really think about it, those that decision that he made changed the course of the entire series because you wonder, had Goku gone to Earth, right? Let's pretend that Frieza never blew up the planet. Here's a what if for Kwame. Man. Had, Goku would have still gone to Earth, right? But would Radix have been the one to go after him? You know, it could have been a totally different situation. It could have been a totally different scenario. And it's one of those things where it, it, it does kind of ruin the entire kind of uh, storytelling motif that Frieza was responsible for his own demise in a roundabout way. Exactly. Yeah. And I still like Frieza as a character, but it does take away a large chunk of what he really is. And Frieza on Namek was really, really, you feared him as a villain. He was like, he was the, and he even claimed several times, you know, he's the most powerful being in the universe. And if he didn't know of Beerus's existence, that would somewhat, uh, Change, like that, that statement would be legitimized. But the fact for me as well that Freeze is constantly saying he's the most powerful being in the universe. No one can challenge him. But he knows about Beerus this whole time. Again, that's another layer that just kind of strips a little bit off Freeze's character for me. I feel uh, like it would have been better if he didn't know Beerus at all. Or, or he had heard of Beerus. Yeah, he heard of Beerus through rumors, but it was kind of like a mythology thing, kind of like the, the Saiyan legend thing that he was unsure about. So, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a bit of a bit of a, a pain in the ass that that's become part of the show now but you know what can you do hopefully like i still like i like beerus as a character so there is some positives to come out of it but yeah they've definitely they've definitely kind of fucked over freezer's character there a lot so i'm not too happy about that so okay how do you feel about the z sword with the old guy and the dinosaurs um retcon the dinosaurs is, is obviously a, just a glaring one like it's it's you know the dinosaurs were like you said earlier they were in dragon ball so I'm uh, guessing it's, it's maybe kind of a, wiped out like most of them, but not all of them. That's the only thing I can figure. Yeah, yeah, but the the dinosaur one's a pretty glaring one. You know what I mean? Like, I I just yeah, I, I wish they would be a bit more careful when they write this stuff or when they write the dialogue even. Um, and the Z sword one, I don't have too much of a problem with, to be honest with you, because if I remember correctly, in Dragon Ball Z, it was never explained how the Kai got in the z sword so that like did, they're just did, creating a reason wait a minute no i believe that kai old kai said that i don't remember if it was a sorcerer or the verbiage he used but he said that somebody trapped him in there who wasn't as powerful as boo or something like that something sad effect and now that's being changed yeah all right well you know that's a that's a minor thing to me like it doesn't that that one doesn't bother me too much the fact that he was sealed they just need they need to elaborate and they need to give a reason as to why he was put sealed in the sword uh, I, like episode two, he just said, as far as I can remember, you know, I was sealed in the sword by, by Beerus Summer. You know, he needs to give, they need to elaborate on that. They can't just say, you know, Beerus was the one that put him in the Z, Z sword. There needs to be some sort of personal uh, character development there between those two as to why uh, the old Kai, you know, hates or fears, reveres uh, Beerus Summer so much. But just apart from the, stra the fact that he is the god of destruction, they need to make some sort of personal thing there as to why he was sealed away inside the Z-Sword. They really need to elaborate on that, otherwise it's just a statement and it doesn't really add to the show at all. Now, what do you think yeah. about Dragon Ball Super's pacing? Now, you have gone on record of being a fan of Kai uh, more so than the original Dragon Ball Z, and I am a fan of the original Dragon Ball Z more than Kai, but I don't hate Kai at all. I just prefer Z. Um, what are your thoughts on the pacing of Super? Because if you ask me, even though I prefer Dragon Ball Z to Kai, the reasons why I prefer Z to Kai have nothing to do with the pacing. I do feel that Dragon Ball Z is extremely slow paced. And we're talking about the anime, not, not the manga, just the anime Dragon Ball Z, obviously. Uh, I'm thinking Dragon Ball Super is even slower because, dude, we're on episode three. And nothing has happened except for, like, kind of just this ominous buildup. Whereas in Dragon Ball Z Episode 3, Goku and Piccolo were already fighting Radix. That's, that's when the Radix fight actually began was Episode 3 of Dragon Ball Z. Um, from the way it's looking, the Beerus-Goku fight is not going to happen until Episode 5. So we've got another episode of essentially padding 
next week or the week after, whenever the, that episode is going to air, with Pilaf, and then another one, you know, on the same episode with Goten and Trunks, another Goten and Trunks adventure, and then Beerus is going to fight Goku. I'm not digging the pacing, man. Honestly, I'm not. I want to know your thoughts. Yeah, I agree with you. I would honestly like to already be, I think by episode three, they should already have covered Bulma's birthday party completely and should be onto the Beerus and Goku scenario. The pacing is a little bit slow, and there is some stuff in there that's unnecessary. Some of it's good. Like, I really, really didn't mind seeing uh, Vegeta obviously go away with his family for a day. That was kind of interesting yeah, right but there, now but we're, the, now we're seeing another Goten and Trunks. We already saw episode one with them having yeah. their own adventure. Why do we have to have another adventure in the kitchen yeah. knocking over a chef? Some of the stuff is very, very unnecessary, and I do agree that the pacings just seem very reminiscent of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's whether to like whether or not they're still kind of writing and creating stuff as they go. Uh, or if they just don't know which direction they want it. Like, I have no idea why the pacing is like this. They have they have the base story for Battle of Gods and Resurrection of F already set in stone. Like they've, they can, they, Obviously, they're changing some little things here and there, but they know the, the premise of those two stories. So why are they taking so long to get through those stories and then get beyond them? You know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't take this long. Yeah, uh, yeah we, really, we, all we, wanna, we all want to go beyond them, I think. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, so they, they are taking their time and the pacing is very reminiscent of dragon ball z but to be honest we we won't know truly what the pacing is like until we have the series finished and then we can really judge it as a whole yeah because the pacing right, might change you're right but right now i'm not digging it bro right now i mean again i'm not trying to be negative i'm ha- happy that we're getting new dragon ball but i'm kind of like you know hurry up hurry up let's get to this already because it's just yeah. it's getting I, to the point where i, I already do with this third episode it was a repeat of the movie bro we got no new information except for one or two yeah. lines Exactly. Uh, I must say that I must say that bar the Shadow Dragon arc of GT, this is still better than GT so far. Um, like the the actual episodes. Well, there's only two episodes, what, but I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. The actual quality of the storytelling and the the character development, I'm enjoying more in Super than I do in GT. Um, and but the, apart from the, the the Shadow Dragon arc, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed that arc a lot. There was a lot of action in that arc. But um, yeah. So far, it's the quality is certainly there. They just they they do need to pick up the pacing because it's a little bit lackluster in terms of fighting. We've only the only fight we've seen is Beerus really versus that uh, random that monster that trans- aliens. Yeah, yeah, that transforms, and, and that's that's really it wasn't even a fight really. It was it was kind of like uh, Piccolo versus Beerus, you know, that really wasn't a fight. So, uh, <laughs> go ten and, so, um, go ten and Trunks versus uh, the dinosaur, or the cobra, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, it really wasn't a fight, so I'm not really digging the the, the fighting action so far. So they really do need to pick up their pace and you know. No, get that's going. the thing. I, I'm okay with comedy. I really, truly am. It's just I feel like there this is unnecessary padding, is what I think. And I, I do want to yeah. clear up a big misconception. I will do a video about this very soon. Dragon Ball Super. There's a lot of fans out there who don't really understand the creative process behind Dragon Ball Super. I think people are very much misunderstanding what's going on here. Toriyama is not, and I repeat, Toriyama is not writing the scripts to the individual episodes of Dragon Ball Super. That is not how it works. Toriyama sent Toei a story draft. He sent them an outline, a manuscript of the story. Toei is adapting it, no different than the manga from the 90s, except that in this case, there's no actual frames and stuff like that. There's character art and things like that that Toriyama and Yamamoto provide, but... There's no original manga to base it off of. It's just kind of, you know, written stuff. So a lot of Dragon Ball Super, what you're seeing is not Toriyama necessarily. It's his original story, but Toei is putting a lot of their own creativity into this story. Therefore, I don't want to get into a canon debate, but the bottom line is that this Dragon Ball Super series is not all just from the mind of Toriyama. It's not. And I'll do a video expressing the detail about this uh, probably later on. Yeah. So and it's it's really like I'll just add something in there, something small, and it's it, it's like you know Quaman, yourself, and and uh, Mike from Laughing Stock. We've all spoken about this uh, off air before. Is that if people like Dragon Ball Super, they're going to class it as canon, and the reason they don't class GT as canon is because they a lot of people don't like GT, and that that really is kind of strange when you think about it. It's just a strange little thing to add in there. Is that if people enjoy Super when it's finished, even though Toriyama is not creating all of it except for the base story outline, people are still going to class this as canon, which is very strange considering he did have some input into GT as well. Yeah, and that's exactly my point. The thing that's very weird about these canon arguments is that people, first of all, people don't even know what the hell. Some people, some fans 
have no clue about what even the word canon even means. That, that's the other thing. To- Toei and Toriyama have never used that word ever. But that's, you know, yeah. doesn't matter. Nonetheless, um, it's funny to me because a lot of fans will sit there and they'll say, the only thing I consider canon is what Toriyama wrote. But what's interesting about that is Toriyama didn't even write Battle of Gods. You say Yusuke Watanabe wrote it and Toriyama came in and made changes. So is that canon to you? We didn't write the original story. Oh, well, what about the Bardock story? Well, I like the Bardock anime more, so that's canon to me. Wait a minute, but Toriyama wrote Dragon Ball Minus. But wait a minute, Toriyama didn't even come up with Bardock. So it's literally like, again, there's no you do point. You make your in, own canon. Huh? You do make your own canon like you always You make say. your own canon. That's what I'm saying. There's no official canon because even though writers have often borrowed things from other people, uh, you know, that's that's common. I mean, we see that all the time. Um, and, and Toriyama making Bardock canon or into the manga, that's fine. That's not the argument here. The argument is that people will say, I only want the Toriyama-involved projects. But then, okay, well, what about Dragon Ball Heroes? What about GT design the characters? There's a lot of debates about the canon that shouldn't even exist because most fans – well, first of all, most fans don't even know what the hell Toriyama did. That's number one. Like the thing I just said right now about him saying the draft to Toei, I bet you nobody knew that. I bet you there's kids out there who actually believe that Toriyama's writing the scripts. But guess what, folks? There's no television show in the history of television. None. Zero. There is no TV show in the history of television, especially ones that are ongoing and don't get broken up into seasons, where one person is writing every script. It, there, it It's never happened. There's no time, and there's no way that one person can write vocal scripts for every episode. 22 minutes? It's, it's not possible. Even Vince yeah. Gilligan, who does Breaking Bad, he's what's called the showrunner. He runs the show. And he tells other writers what the story is going to be, but he doesn't write every episode. He just looks at the script and then makes changes, and then boom, we're done. No one guy can write a whole freaking show over and over yep, and over again. Exactly. So yep, last topic no, before exactly. we get out of here, bro. Do you think that Super is going to overwrite the ending to GT? Some people have been – I'm sorry, to Z. I'm sorry. People have been speculating about this because it seems like there's, we're not going to get any time skips. I don't know yet if we are. Um, it seems like maybe with episode four we may advance a, a little while. I don't, or maybe episode five. I don't know. Maybe after Beerus beats Goku, we'll get a time skip. But as of right now, there's no word about a time skip. So Pan might be born early. Like Videl might be pregnant now and not in four years, which is gonna fuck up the end of Z. Do you think that Super is gonna write over the ending of Z? And, and, and first of all, I have a follow up question. But first of all, do you think Super is gonna get to the Oop thing and just? go past it and just make a new story or like what do you how do you feel about that um i've been quite vocal about this in the past and a lot of people don't agree with me and that's fine but this is my thoughts on it and i don't believe it's going to go past the ending of z and i think that there's just too much they're going to cover with the whole alternate universe uh scenario and all this sort of stuff that's this is the way i see the series going the direction i see it going there's too much to cover in the alternate universes and really ultimately the, the by the end of super I see it basically with Vegeta and Goku coming back to the main timeline or branching off into another timeline, but I don't see them going past the end of Z. And my thoughts for that have always been, although GT was like panned and a lot of people didn't like it, it's still part of the Dragon Ball universe in a sense, and people still accept it and some people still like it and they're still making money off GT, whether it be through toys, video games. I just don't see them erasing gt completely even though toriyama himself has come out and said he considers it a side story well no no i don't have a problem well not even that we've already talked about that before i'm not talking about erasing gt i'm talking about this is actually worse jay i'm talking about erasing the 28th tenkaichi budokai the oob stuff i'm talking about completely wiping that um and, and here's where it gets weird if the it's in the it's in the dragon ball manga so how would you feel in your opinion, if Dragon Ball Super completely ignored Oob, just completely ignored it, and they made a whole new well, timeline. like any fan, I'd be quite upset, but I just don't think they're going to do that either. Like, that's well, I don't what I mean. either, I don't but I'm saying gonna... if they did. Like, can you if, imagine? If they did. Dude, the yeah. canon debates are going to be a nightmare. Yeah. I, 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 but I've thought from the start, it's not going to erase the last Tenkaichi Budoka, and it's not going to go past, it's not going to go into the GT timeline. I just, like, into the era that GT is set, and that's the point I'm making. It's not going to go past the last Tenkaichi Budokai, and it's not going to go into the uh, GT timeline. 
And if it does, they'll some, somehow make it a branch off or an alternate universe is what I'm saying. I just don't see them erasing from the last Tenkaichi Budoka onwards. I don't see them doing that. I just think it would be a really, really bad business decision for the for the franchise as a whole. So I just don't think they'll do it. And I've been very vocal about that from the start. And if other people have any other opinions about that, that's fine. But I'm going to have to say I strongly disagree with them. Uh, I don't think it's going to get rid of the, the last tournament or GT. I just think it's going to finish right before that, perhaps. Really? Well, I could. I mean, but Goku, that's my see, Goku can't see Bulma because they haven't seen each other for five years. Once they went yeah, to which might have something to do – that might have something to do with – Goku and, Goku and Vegeta going off into an alternate, you know, reality or timeline. We we have to wait and see, but I just don't see them doing it. I'm not saying they won't do it, but I, I just don't agree with them doing it, and I don't think they will. I think they're smart enough to not do that. No, I'll I, give them I, enough credit. I, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah I don't think they will. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, definitely check out Super Jayan, uh, his channel, and uh, I also – don't think they're going to overwrite the ending. Some people believe that they are. They're going to throw it all out the window. I mean, as far as GT goes, it's already kind of hard. to. It really is hard to fit it now. It, let's pretend that GT was canon. Let's, let's live in a fa- fantasy world. Um, with the SSJ God and SS God SS or whatever, the red and blue hair, with those forms being unlocked, unless Goku loses that power, there's literally no reason they didn't use those forms of GT. So it's just not possible. There's no well, way. That's- you know what I mean? That's why I, that's why I say it's very likely that they're going to follow through with this alternate timeline thing. I just think it's going to happen. And I think uh, GT, if anything, will be described as a timeline where, you know. But you think that GT didn't... is an alternate universe. You're calling that one right now. You're predicting it right I'm, now. I'm saying, I'm saying GT is one of those alternate universes. And I'm calling GT to be a universe where Vegeta and Goku never met Beerus, never met Whis. Never unlocked Super Saiyan God. Never so you, you're going to call this universe 1997 then is what you're calling, basically saying, right? Pretty much. Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 4 <laughs> is the equivalent of Super Saiyan God in that universe. That's what I'm calling. And if it happens, well, you know who called it, guys. But you, that's what I'm calling. You might be right. All right. Well, check out Super Jan's channel, guys. He's got a lot of good content. They're reviewing toys. No Tenga Egg, unfortunately, for all you sickos out there. But uh, uh, I think I tell enough of, Jay, enough of Jay's private life in the songs that we write or that I write <laughs> and that you enjoy. Jay, if you want me to stop, just, just tell me. No, no. Perhaps, perhaps when I'm in a relationship one day and uh, I've got another half that uh, I need to be respectful of. Well, hopefully maybe that will never happen. <laughs> uh, good on you. <laughs> All right. Uh, hopefully you'll just be single forever. And honestly, I don't think you're really too unhappy about that. Well, I like the single life. But uh, hey, ladies, if uh, you're interested and you like Dragon Ball out there, just hit me up because uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll give you a chat. Yeah, he maybe, will... maybe I'll give you more than a chat. He'll at least give you a chance, and if you like Dragon Ball, he'll give you more of a chance there, uh, ladies, and, and be willing to relocate to Brisbane. Yep, that's right. I'll, I'll, even, I'll even go over to America to visit you if you live in America. <laughs> but, but that's after you, you get your 100K subs, and you have the money to do it. That's right. right. That's right. That's You're right. doing that now. Yeah. So go sub to this guy. So help, help him come. Go sub to him, but help him fly over here. How about that? That's almost yeah, as bad as, as, as subbing to you to, so you can quit your job at Staples. I mean, that, that's almost as bad as that. <laughs> well, I don't have a job at state. I'm not cutting that out, by the way. All right, well, we'll talk to <laughs> we'll talk to y'all later. Catch you down. Catch the you phone. later, guys.